What's up, y'all? I'm Shaley Deschel Bourget, and I'm here to tell you a crazy tour story I experienced once in my lifetime. Um, so, a little backstory. This was in the beginning of my time with the band of Mice and Men. I can't remember what tour we were on, but it was like a in-between day off, in-between another show, and one of the guys in the band hit up a, a fan or something they offered a, to let us crash at their place. So, I, I don't even remember, just somewhere in the United States, you know, we're, we're all wide awake. We show up at the house. Uh, I don't even see the person that that is allowing us to sleep there. I don't know who they are, what they look like, but I guess we are allowed to sleep in their living room and whatnot. So we get in there and, you know, we're just kind of just tireless. Like, we, we're not tired, so we have a little bit of energy. So myself and Tino, we end up going to the, to the grocery store. We wanted to pick up a few beers or whatever and just kind of drink a little bit and pass out, wake up and drive. So we go on that little journey, we come back, and uh, we drink a few beers, and we're just like laying there, and we all just kind of felt it, but we didn't say it. We were just like, in our minds, we're like, I don't want to be here. Something about being here just feels weird, and I just, I just don't want to be here. A few minutes later, one of the boys walks out, and he's like, whispers to us, he's like, hey guys, you want to go? And we're all just like, yes! Let's get out of here, but not before we stole the little Caesar's pizza in the fridge and a couple two liters of soda because we were just, we were just, that wasn't a really nice thing to do, but whatever. So we took that, we ended up heading out. I was driving. Now, keep in mind, I was probably four Coors Lights deep. Wasn't tipsy by any means. Maybe felt a little bit of a buzz. And that was in the period of a few hours. So I wasn't drunk by any means or tipsy. Um... So we start driving, we turn the GPS on, and you know we're driving along, we stop at the gas station, I pick up a monster. Thank goodness I picked up this monster and it'll make sense later on. Um, so I'm driving, you know, I'm wa watching the GPS now. Remember back in that time, we didn't have GPS on our phones yet, so we had to like buy a GPS unit. And uh, I'm following it and I'm like, I don't know, dude, this seems a little weird, like where are we? There's nothing around here. Sure as shit, I end up pulling up to a Navy Army military base, right? Now, what you what I forgot to tell you guys in the beginning is we had a little bit of a marijuana on us. Or no, we didn't. I had a pipe in my backpack. No weed, but a pipe, a used pipe. And I'm like, oh no. And mind you, right when I pulled up to the station, this uh, military base, I knew like, okay, damn it, dude. If they smell the alcohol on my breath and they find the weed, I am totally screwed. So, uh, you know, they're like, what are you guys doing? Or like, I don't know, the GPS just took us here. I guess it's the wrong way. They're like, all right, well, we're gonna need you to pull over. And I'm drinking my monster. I'm like, oh, thank goodness I'm drinking this monster because monsters has very extreme, like, you know, uh, fruity smell to it that'll cover up things. So we pull over and they're just kind of talking to us. So they're like, uh, so we're gonna have to get, you know, we're gonna have to check you guys out. So you guys need to pull over and I'll get out of the vehicle. So they end up bringing out a dog. The dog sniffs the van. They, the dog signals to to the officer. You know, there's something in there. So of course they're like, hey, you know, the, the dog uh, smelled something, so we're gonna have to rip your whole van apart and see what's up. So they pull us all out, they rip the whole van apart, they find a bag of pills. Now, uh, the drummer in the, the van at the time, Tino, he had a bag of pills, and these weren't drugs by any means, they were just a bunch of different vitamins. But it looked suspicious because he threw like 400 vitamins and all these pills in one giant Ziploc bag. Like, for some reason, you know, he probably got some jumbo ones. So they found that, and that, made it even worse because they're like, all right, we need to get a narcotics officer out here. So fast forward a few minutes, there's about eight police cars or military cars or whatever, about 25 officers. They've ripped our whole van apart. They're going through in their booklet, like checking off like all the pills to make sure that they're not drugs or whatever, verify them all. They end eventually finding the pipe. And of course I'm the one that's driving. So he goes up to me and of course I'm going to take the rep for what's mine. And they go, Hey, uh, so whose pipe is this? And I'm like, Right here I go, dude. I'm screwed. You know, I was like, it's mine. And they're like, okay. So they were still checking. He's like, uh, or no, he did say, he said this. First, he asked earlier on in that night, he asked if there were any drugs in there. And I said, no. So when he found the pipe, he approached me and he said, I thought you said there were no drugs in there. Then what's this? And I said, you're correct, officer. There is no drugs in there. That's a pipe. That's a device designed to smoke things, but that is not drugs. And he's like, but there's weed resin in there. I'm like, Tomato, tomato, you asked me a question, I answered it exactly how you wanted me to. Um, so 
you know, he pulls me over to the side. I had to be separated from the whole band and I'm sitting over there. Mind you, I'm, I'm younger then and a little bit of a buzz on. So I had a little snippy attitude, you know, like I wasn't drunk by any means, but I just, I didn't really feel the severity of it yet. Or at least I was trying to lie to myself. I was like, I'm probably gonna go to jail, but I just want to act normal. And maybe I act a little too normal, you know? So, uh, after some time and them giving us dirty looks and stuff, and my, mind you, this has been going on for about two to three hours, uh, the officer comes up to me and he's like, hey, uh, so we're going to let you go, but uh, I want you to promise me that, you know, you're not going to be doing any drugs or any of this. And I answered the question like this, and, and immediately he cut me off and um, was about to, like, take back what he said to let us go. But, I, you know, after he asked me that question, I said, well, and I started my, my answer like that. And he's like, well, what? Oh, so you don't want, so you want to go to jail? And I'm like, no, 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 officer. You didn't let me finish. That was one word to my sentence. And I was re-triggered, like reformatting my sentence I was, as I was saying that. And then I, uh, I said, well, after seeing how much of an uh, ordeal this has become and how scary this could be in my life, I think it would be the best bet for me to stop smoking weed entirely and do what you say, officer. I'm very sorry for your time. It's like, all right, guys, I'm going to keep your pipe, but you guys are good to go. So they eventually let us go. And then I eventually the next day went and bought some more weed and smoked it because I don't give up. You know what? But yeah, so that is my story. One of the craziest stories. I was definitely scared out of my mind and I'm glad uh, I dodged that bullet because it could have been really bad for me. One of a few, but that was probably the, the most scariest one for me. And, you know, the whole band would have had to be punished for that decision and whatnot. But all right, guys, thank you for having me. You guys take care. Peace.